definitely going to beat Woolites and Banda again and set MY up for a solid early game. We'll see if that is the case. Thresh is the first ban here. We'll see what Rocket answer with. There is a Hecarim taken away. Joe Wow, not going to get his hands on the Power Pony in the top lane. Well, he won't get his hands on a Kog'Maw either. Well, definitely not the case, but we have seen Jinx being played in the past. And it is something that is still showing true. So what are the Power Picks still available? Junglers left untouched. So Juan is available, as well as Rek'Sai, as well as Nidalee. You've obviously got the likes of Lulu still possible if they wanted to go that route. No, not Until anymore. now. Yeah, there you go. So that one's taken off the board. Rocket have one more band to their names. And what, what is really first pickable in this instance for Meteor Makers? There's so many options. Sejuani is not one of them, however. So with Sejuani off the table, I think the safe pick would be the jungle route. The safe pick would get something secure. You've got the, the pick of the litter as far as mid lane champions are concerned. Um, and of course, forgetting about the tree. So safe and secure. But, you know, a ton of jungle is still available. A ton of mid lane is still available. This is interesting because a player like Nuketuck has had Zed banned a, a bajillion times throughout the course of the split. 13 of their 18 games, that's been taken off the table. Now, the reason I'm going to stick with Zed and you know, some of the others, Nuketuck can play any assassin he wants to in this middle lane, wait for it to play out, but he needs to carry with it. Nuketuck was a super hype mid laner coming into the split, and he's just not had that level of impact. He's not been, he's not had those standout games that we've seen from a Power of Evil, that we've seen from a Feb event. And, you know, it's a little late in a split, but you can always try pick it up in your very last game. Yeah, we'll have to see what he does. For now, they're not going to decide as they go ahead and take the Jinx. As you mentioned, might be the possibility. Yankos also picks up Nidalee. So they're going to hope to try and snowball and get themselves ahead. What do you meet your makers answer with? Now, I've seen a bit of Jungle Gragas may come in. Still some time on the clock, though. Yeah, we've actually been talking to all of the players regarding Gragas versus Sejuani, and there's a couple of split opinions between the Challenger teams and the LCS teams about how effective that Gragas can be. And you cannot argue the tankiness, the disengage that it offers, especially when comboed with that um, Cinder Hulk. There's a lot of natural synergy. I quite like the idea of Gragas plus Maokai because you've just got such a beefy front line. I don't, however, like the idea of Corky. If Rocket decide to lock in some tanks, Knowing the fact that you're coming up against the Nidalee means that uh, likelihood is a little more reduced, but we'll have to see what sort of frontline Rocket can put together uh, to contest Meet Your Makers. We will indeed. Rocket so far, not a lot of tankiness on him, but they've got a top and several other things to decide for. Janna might be the support choice for Vander. Let's see if they do decide to take it. The Janna Jinx lane, a little light on their feet. Of course, there have been a number of supports banned out. Lulu, obviously flex pick, but definitely would help in that type of composition. Yeah, and you know, Vanda was one of my favorite supports last year um, on, a, on a multitude of champions, but has sort of fallen from grace. He's not really had the same level of playmaking ability that we've seen from other supports. And uh, yes, of course, Vanda is playing with Woolite now. He was playing with Salava last year. This Janna, if it gets locked in, it'll be the third time that we've seen it played. and. It's a non, uh, it, it's a very, very disengaged support, obviously. Gonna buy some safety for Jinx, but when you've got Nidalee that wants to jump in, you've got Janna, uh, Irelia that wants to jump in as well. I'm not sure if Rocket can stand the test of a Gragas Maokai frontline. If they don't get ahead early, they are simply not gonna be able to burn through the tree and the Fat Man quickly enough. And yes, of course, Janna will buy some time with Monsoon, but I'm not sure it's gonna be enough. It will have to be seen. Let's see what make Makers want to finalize their comp with. Noxiac, he really has liked this Leona. Meteor Makers as a team has really liked this Leona, but measure of success they've had has definitely not been up there until recently. We'll see if they decide to take it this time around. The Ari also being considered for Corey. We'll see. A couple seconds left before they lock in. Just before they do, I think on the side of MYM, they've got a fairly standard comp. You've got beefy front line. AP, you've got engage from your support, you've got engage from your top lane. Um, the only thing that I would have preferred would have been a slightly different AD carry, but knowing that they're not coming up against Mega Tanks, Corky actually does relatively well, and he's going to have a lot of protection from so many players. Yeah. Uh, but the one thing I do want to highlight is just how much pressure there's going to be on Overpower. His Irelia has probably been his most impressive champion 
Only played it once, I believe this split. And the reason I said it's impressive when he played it at I Am Cologne, leading up to the LCS, that was where he really shined. Got his hands on a couple of tanks here and there and has not had that same level of impact. So we'll need to see whether or not Overpower can do well in the early game if they can get those head-to-head -head lanes against J1. Because, of course, Leona, not particularly great lane swaps. No, definitely not. Rocket, uh, considering if they want to go the Katarina route again, this time they swap it over to LeBlanc. nuketux has got his pick for the last, and he does take LeBlanc. So they have a number of champions that want to dive in, a number of champions that want to sit back. Yeah, definitely the case. But uh, for Rocket, the idea being LeBlanc, Nidalee, Irelia finding targets, get the assassination with Jinx, get excited, and if anything goes awry, Jan is there to disengage. LeBlanc is Nuketuk's most played champion. Five games, this will be his sixth. He's lost four of them. And when you've got everything available to you, obviously this has been the priority for Nuketuk, but he's simply not been able to really impact the game quite as effectively. What I'd like to see from Rocket, strong laning phase, I feel like they can do very well, especially early on. We've seen LeBlanc do very, very well in the opening minutes. But what Rocket need to make sure they do is impact those side lanes. Make sure that Wolai can get ahead. Make sure that Overpower can start to snowball, get to that Trinity Force as quickly as possible, and then use their sort of mid-game power spike from every champion except Jinx to overpower the slightly underfarmed tanks. Once Maokai and uh, Gragas get up there, I'm not sure there's enough frontline or disruption from the Rocket squad to survive. So. The longer this goes, the more I think Nietzsche makers have a chance. Yeah, we'll have to see how that one shakes out. Now, with those picks and bands locked in, ah, you guys know what to do. Go ahead and tweet us at LOL Esports with the hashtag MYMWIN or ROC win. Let us know who you think has the edge in this one as we get ready to fire up this game at number four. Will it be MYM? Will it be Team Rocket? Crowd typed either way, guys. Let's get on to the rift. And something that this matchup shares is a fight to stay in the LCS. MYM fighting to avoid auto-relegation. Rocket fighting to avoid the promotion tournament. Who wants their LCS lives more? I guess we're about to find out. I think that's a fair bet. Now, uh, meet your makers. So far, looks like we're going to be in for standard lanes unless we see any shenanigans and swap rounds. There have been a couple of close shaves in the beginning of the last couple of games. See if that trend continues today. Line of scrimmage, though, to start things off. That must be the only NFL term the entire league world understands. Yep. If you don't watch NFL... But you know what that is. Oh, I, I know what the line of scrimmage is because I've been taught it watching LCS. The more you know. And there we go. So it does look like it's going to be those standard lanes. The uh, question is how well can Wallite and Vanda do for the opening few levels? Will they be able to get some control against Mr. Rolls and Noxiak? Noxiak is a de facto aggressive player. He likes to go in, he likes to do it often, and he likes to roam. So if Rocket do not arrest control in the lane, expect Noxiak to go for those level two, level three all-ins. And if Mr. Ross is pushing, then expect Noxiak to roam. So our eyes should definitely be on how his movements interact maybe with Horo and how they interact the other lanes. Right, and this is also not going to be really any detriment to Rales in that case because he's on a very, very safe AD carry to try and play it out in any, in any situation. As long as he saves his Valk and doesn't Spend it carelessly, he should be perfectly fine. Unless Rocket commit maybe four, three or four members onto him repeatedly. Yeah, definitely the case. And after all of the hubbub about the uh, lane swaps, it's actually Rocket that initiate this one. We didn't see any deep vision. Just a straight up call. Mr. Oz and Noxiak on the Krugs. And you can see that Woolite and Vander up top. So. It's going to buy Woolite and Vanda a little bit of time. Remember, they lost their 2v2 yesterday. And I think against the Corky Leona, that's a difficult lane, especially knowing how proficient Noxiak is on Leona. But we do need to see how well Overpowered does. At what point can he get that Trinity Force? And when can he start becoming impactful? Yeah, there's always a ticking timer when you've got Norelia in the game. Wow, he hit his level two. He's going to be going up to the top to deal with Vander and Woolite. Everything else normal for the time being. Yeah, I want to comment on that ticking timer. You're 100% right. Whenever there's an Aurelia, there's the short fuse that at some point Aurelia is going to explode. But whenever there's a Maokai, there's a longer fuse. You look at SK's game just previously, Freddy on that Maokai was initiating over and over and over. All right, Noxiak is going to find Nipta, but no support from anybody else. 180 degree turnaround, though, as soon as he sees Noxiak. 
He has been giving Corey a little bit of a hard time, but he is getting as good as he's giving. Start this one off. Yankos and Overpow still running together as they look at this top side of the map. What are they going to do while Horo and JWoww focus on the red buff down bottom? So hand holding at the moment. Both of the respective top laners were sticking with the junglers for a while, getting some early levels and as much CS as possible. The thing is, Rockout were more decisive in this push. They shoved the wave in top earlier and quicker, and they're gonna most likely take this tower. We saw how many minions there were not being cleared out, especially with their next conga line pouring in. Meet Your Maker's opting to secure the dragon, while Mr. Rolls is pushing the bottom tower. So if Overpow opts to teleport, Maybe he can save it. We'll see what they decide. But Rocket with early tower. Yeah, fast push for them. So they should be able to swap down bot if they can get this one in time. There it goes. Get excited for Wolite. But meanwhile, JWoww Horo are trading the dragon. They'll be able to secure that one up. Takes a bite out of their health bars, but they do get it. And meanwhile, on the bottom, there's a fairly big wave that Rollins is pushing in on this turret. So not going to go down this wave. But if Mr. Rollins has got... Oh, there's the next wave just poured in behind it. Good timing going to be able to try secure the wine. So global advantage to Rocket. They're not letting up. Nobody has backed from the bottom lane yet. As you can see, Noxiac and JWoww trying to defend this inner turret. And this is fairly smart from Rocket. Again, accelerate the laning phase. Get yourself away from that sort of slightly weaker head-to-head -head phase. If you can get early global advantage, quicker Trinity Force. Maybe quicker Shiv plus Eye Edge for Woolite. And that can allow you to force those objectives. Especially if outer towers are down. It allows Rocket to then be aggressive in the jungle and try to find those rotational base kills and objectives. Right, but this does slow down Overpow a little bit. He's not really been able to do much other than build a Ruby Crystal. So they're trading that potential advantage for getting some early objectives and getting themselves out of a, a dangerous laning phase. So I feel like that's worth as long as they haven't been punished too much for it. Yes, they've given up a dragon. They've nearly given up a tower. But it just seems like something that they're happy to take. But Nuke Duck. He could be in some trouble, has to burn his flash as he sees Horo and Noxiac running him down. Yeah, I think that was a little bit of silly from Nuketak to distortion forward. Nobody from MOM had been in sight for a while, and the wave was pushed past the river, a river and he opts to W aggressively. Does get punished and loses summon a spell. So we'll see how this impacts the CS, knowing that Corey's got a little bit of safety. Remember the first few minutes we actually caught glimpses of that lane. Nuketak had actually bullied Corey away a touch. So that's going to buy Corey some breathing room. Fairly low CS, thanks to that lane swap and the focus on towers and dragons. But you've got to decide, will MYM continue to play the dragon focus game? Or will they be caught out? And thanks to the back timing from Mr. Rawls, it's actually, again, Rocket with a very smart movement. They're going to get a lot of damage onto this bottom tower. And if anyone sticks around, they're at risk of uh, going down. Rollers will spot that ward. Horo. Not able to clear that one away in time. Noxiac's coming in. So 3v3 here if they want to take it. Still, they're behind the tower line right now. Still pretty dangerous. Ooh, a lot of damage on Rocket as they try to move away from that one. Meanwhile, Woolite still pushing away and pecking away at that tower, but it didn't quite get enough damage on it. Not nearly to go down. So MYM have defended here. A third of the hit points dropped away. Rocket, I think... Uh Maybe a little greedy. They were looking for the kills. They didn't commit to damage on the tower. Just trying to feel it out, see what they could make of the play. And at the end of the day, Rocket with the tower advantage. Noxiac, I think he's caught Woolite. Yes, he does. Oh, yeah. Flame Choppers were on, though. Woolite is still very, very low. And he has to back out, but he takes a zap after the fact. So Noxiac is perfectly happy with that trade right now. They're going to have to go back to base on Rockat's side. Yeah, so no summoner spells blown from the side of Woolite, and he's actually backing. Doesn't have a whole lot of gold since he picked up that uh, pickaxe earlier on. Grabs himself the Avarice Blade. So, going to try farm himself again to that Eye Agent Shiv. Going to sit in that 2v2, but Woolite's going to be very careful. Noxiax landed his first, first Zenith Blade, and it was Woolite getting caught that cost Rockat yesterday. It was that final mistake that allowed the Copenhagen Wolves to win the game. So we'll see whether or not that plays on Woolite's positioning as all of the lanes have just defaulted. Overpowered against JWoww on the top. JWoww with not a lot of vision in the river. Yankos decides to go pay him a visit. Could be in a little bit of trouble. Yes, he could. Overpowered. Blade Surgeon in, just trying to get himself farmed up and get relevant. Meanwhile, Corey Horo should be taking down that blue buff handily. 
Rocket still want to try and take towers where they can, but they've stopped getting over aggressive on this after the one. And what? He's been pushed back a little bit thanks to Rales and Noxia. So I initially liked what Rocket were doing. The sort of 4v0 push top, secure the tower. They tried to do a similar thing bottom, punish the back timing of Mr. Rawls. But since that push somewhat stalled out, Rocket are now falling behind CS in the top and AD carry. It's not a large amount, but it is a little bit noticeable. And we need to see how Rocket decides to play this one out. Their initial strategy of accelerating that laning phase and trying to get control of the map yielded sm small victories. But it's not enough to be dominant. And despite having the objective of the tower, they're only 400 gold ahead. Again, thanks to the farming that MYM have put into play. So MYM just trying to play the standard game better if they can. And force back Woolite and Vander Noxak knocked up in route. Morales is still launching rockets. Yeah, high five to Vander there. Started channeling that Howling Gale as Noxiac moved forward and instantly interrupted the Zenith Blade. So I really like that pick. And I also want to touch on itemization quickly. Corey, your defensive starts on Negatron mid versus the needlessly large rod. So that's going to make... It, it, again, it just signals how that lane matchup is playing. Yes, Corey's not losing out on CS, but he's feeling the pinch. He's feeling the poke and the pressure of Nukedak's LeBlanc damage. Let's go ahead and check in on what's going on in the mid lane right now. Corey? Nuke Duck, blue buffs between them. It has been a little less aggressive since Nuke Duck uh, nearly bought it earlier. So he's been playing a bit more reserved, sitting on the needlessly large rod to, as you mentioned, the defensive Negatron cloak from Corey. Horo now going to walk into a ward as he moves his way up, pinged out immediately. Fair amount of vision here invested by Rocket in that river. Four seconds on the dragon. Nobody's really eyeballing it just yet. And remember, of course, Rocket were unable to get anything on that previous dragon. It was a four minute uh, Drake because Rocket stuck to the tower. So with Meacher Makers knowing the timer and knowing they've got somewhat of a advantage in the bottom lane, Woolites and Vander being bullied back, small level advantage as well. Once Noxiac gets access to that solar play, you can see Horo is sniffing around as well. So the first big team fight could be around the second dragon. Everybody's here. Overpower's moved down, didn't use the teleport. JWoww is walking through the river as well, but it's Rocket that have got superior vision control. And they're the one that's going to proc the Dragon Horo, throws in the barrel. It's a Christmas present for the Drake and Rocket. Look to try to secure this one up. They have the Crab Shrine, they've got the speed boost that comes with it. Corey's still a little bit away. They might have to give this one up unless they want to try for a steal. In comes another barrel. In comes the big barrel, but it's secured by Yankos anyway. And it is one-to-one -one in Dragons. So I think very smart play from Rocket. They had a tighter group of five. Um, everybody from Rocket was in the river. And you, if you looked at the mini-map, j was coming from the side, Coria to come from the top. Also very important to note, the timing benefited Rocket because Noxiac had not hit level six yet. So the solar flare for engage and you know, to, to, to hold people in place to allow Gragas and Maokai to disrupt simply wasn't there. So again, smart play from Rocket. It's not absolute control, but MYM are dancing to Rocket's beat. For this time in the game, that's absolutely true. So, it's only 11 and a half minutes in, plenty of time for things to happen. Rocket, they have a slight gold lead, and now they've evened up the Dragon score. We'll see what happens continuing. From the top, Overpow, he went ahead and was able to pick up his Sheen after all of that. He's getting closer to that Trinity Force. We'll keep an eye on that ticking timer for a while. JWoww and Horo coming up to meet him very slowly. Yankos roving around, trying to throw some traps down to make sure he keeps tabs on the movements of Meet Your Makers. Yeah, and Rocket have been unable to... Actually, Rocket haven't tried to make aggressive plays on champions. They've made their, their intentions very clear. It's towers as primary. They had timer on that dragon, and they made sure they got it. They invested one, two, three, four, five or six wards in the river, which allowed them to then obviously secure that their first dragon of the game. And I think this is smart. You know, Rocket, they're, they're farming their way up. They want to get those item spikes, and then they want to pick fights. The only thing is, they've got to be a little careful, because you don't want Horror and JWoww to come so tanky. Woolite, he's stunned. Yeah, there's a Solar Flare. There's a Xena Blade. Woolite, he's taken way low right now. Noxiac knocked into him, but he's going to have to bail away. That's going to be first blood. It goes to Overpower after he teleports in, and JWoww's was canceled. If anything, that shows you just how prepared Rocket were for the Noxiac engage. Overpower began teleporting so quickly. The decision to help out the bottom lane was very, very smart. It results in Overpower getting that first kill. Despite what was 
for all intents and purposes, a perfect engage from Noxiac. Noxiac and MYM didn't have that same level of instant support from the rest of the team. Not enough backup. And now there's a teleport gone for JWoww as well. He got nothing out of that. Overpower certainly got a lot out of it. Goes back, gets Phage. Looking pretty good right now as he moves up and just goes back to defend his tower and farm a little bit more. Decide to meet your makers. You gotta be careful, otherwise this one could start running away from them. And they will be in dangerous territory having to duke it out. Actually, no, if they lose this one, they're just totally out. Correct, if meet your makers lose this game, they will place 10th, and that means they will get replaced by the number one challenger team. Everybody's expecting that to be Origin at this point. They only dropped one of their regular season games, but Origin still need to win playoffs, so. Still a ways to go, and in this game, there's still a ways to go, but still. And when I'm on the back foot for the time being, Rocket, they're showing that they want to end on a high note. We do see in the middle lane there, Willite actually swapping away from the Mr. Isles Noxiac lane, he's down 20 odd CS, and again, still feeling the pressure. The first roam from a mid laner is, of course, Corey. He's gonna try and help out in this top lane, and Jay Wow has caught Overpower. Overpower will flash his way out of danger. Still, successful move for Jay Wow as he's gotten that summoner forced. Nuke Duck in the bottom, just clearing a few more minions out. Corey with the Ward Wars in the river. Go back to grab his blue on top of it and to defend his tower. So Mirror Maker's covering their bases quite well right now. Yeah, let's see if they can keep this one up and get back into it. Yeah, we do have to touch on Yankos' build as well. He's a little bit ahead of Horror, of course. More CS, got the assist on the board, but he's also got that Catalyst to protect as a second item. And we've been seeing these sort of tier second as a standard, if I can use that term. So we'll see where Yankos goes with this. Obviously expecting the Rod of Ages and signaling a late game power spike. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I feel about that because again, I am very scared of, you know, J1 and Horo as they grow. Yes, you're always gonna have LeBlanc who's great late. You're gonna have Jinx who's probably even better. We'll touch on that in a second. Horo has found Yankos. Yes, and he finds the explosive cast. Yankos on the run, Solar Flare gonna land on him and Horo secures that one up. J Wow wasn't even really needed for that. It's a little unfortunate for Yankos, but an easy kill for Meecher Makers. That's their first of the game. Mr. Rolls forced to defend in the mid lane, but you notice New Tucks come up as well, and we've got another top lane battle. Yes, we do. But JWoww is the one with the minions at his back, and thanks to their help, and just how big he's getting right now, Overpower was forced back under turret. So yeah, to go back to that point, going to be interesting to see how well Vanda can throw those monsoons out. Because, of course, the only real threat for Woolite is if he gets caught out by a Solar Flare, by Cory, or a Maokai, right? You need to see, you need to see that assassin. Cory has to blow Woolite up. And if he does, then the rest of MOM can use those beefy tanks to sort of out-damage and out-sustain the Irelia, the Nidalee, just by being more beefy. So we'll see how that works out. But uh, you do see Trinity Force picked up for Overpass. So I'm expecting to see them play a little more aggressively. I do expect that indeed. Take a look. Some members of Giants watching this game means quite a lot for their LCS future. I'd imagine they're rooting for Rocket in this case. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think so too, Pyra. Uh, the, interesting thing, the interesting thing about that is, of course, even if Giants or MYM do place not, they still have to re-qualify through the promotion tournament. It's not a guarantee. It's difficult, but it is one that they'd rather prefer. Dragon number three has spawned. Rocket are once again grouped. Look at Corey on the side. Corey is looking to assassinate a squishy, and he said he sights on Yankos. Yes, he has, and he might have gotten him. Yep, he does. Now, can he make his escape? Oh, that is a good solar flare down. Nuke Duck moving in, trying to get more. It's going to be a double kill going over to Corey, and Woolite back to farm as they have MYM. Moving on this one, in comes the rocket. Will it do enough? No, it's intercepted by the fat man. And Horo smites down Dragon 2 for Meet Your Makers. Yeah, not gonna steal that one away like North America, but a very, very good flank. Corey reading the situation just perfectly. Look at your minimap. Rocket was so focused on Dragon and the impending threat of the Gragas Leona Maokai that they peeled away and ran straight into Corey's waiting arms. He picked up Yankos instantly, and as Rocket committed to try and blow Corey up, who was on low health, 
Corey actually just got that second kill, so very well played. As long as Corey can keep flanking like that and taking out the Yankos, the Warlight, even the Nuke Duck in certain circumstances, that is how Meteor Makers can win these team fights. They want the threat of JWoww, Horo, and Noxiac to buy space for Corey to pick and choose exactly who he wants to blow up. They were certainly able to do it there. Corey coming up with a big play and a double for himself. Teleport now by JWoww onto this tower. It's going to be enough to force Rocket away. So they successfully defend that one there. Meanwhile, Corey's on the bottom. That's going to prompt Rocket to respond to it as well. Yeah, and something we've also got to highlight. Not only did MYM get the team fight victory, they got the middle tower and they got the dragon. So MYM was slightly down in gold, and they've now swung to about a 2,000 gold lead. So very, very smart play. This is the number 10 team in Europe. Number, Yeah, it is currently number 10. No, they're playing like they're better than it right now. We said at the very beginning, with Noxia coming into this team, it has just transformed. The synergy that they've developed now, is just it's just been unreal in the to, last several weeks. Yeah, I'm trying to quote Noxia. I think it was last week he actually said he wants to save Meteor Makers. And he seems to be hell-bent on that. The thing that we, all, we also have to ask, right? Can Noxia be as impactful on non-Leona champions? Because much like uh, Bunny Fufu or, or even Sheep from a few years ago from North America as examples, they were sort of Thresh mates. If they didn't play Thresh, they didn't have that massive impact in the game. Yeah, it is kind of a question, and I feel like regardless of what does happen in this match, teams going against them in the future are going to be fairly eager to test that out. All it takes is a ban. That's it, one ban. Theory. And of course, it does allow Corey or J-Wall Horror to get one of their comfort picks. And they seem to be doing very well. 20 minutes on the clock. As we said, that front line of MYM is just going to get beefier and beefier. Working towards that Randian's Omen for JWoww. A lot of HP stacked up for Horo at the moment. He's also sitting on that Catalyst. And Janko's still sitting in Catalyst. Has yet to upgrade, yet to pick up anything further. 1,360 gold. Getting closer to enough. And Pirate, his tower's low. Overpower has no backup. MYM, do they want the dive or do they want the tower? It looks like the dive. I think they want the dive, but they do get a flash for a Solar Flare. They'll get the tower afterwards. So they get something as they go hunting. And down it goes. Three towers to one is the score. Meteor Makers have now melted all the outers. So we're going to find ourselves in the situation where Meteor Makers with the lead and the limited damage sources. On the condition, Meteor Makers are grouped effectively and have the right vision. They should be able to win team fights. The only time MYM will get taken out is when Rocket can do to MYM what MYM did to Dra Rocket at the Dragon. Rocket will need to look for a flank with Yankos, with Nuke Duck. Look for an assassination with the Super Mega Death Rocket. And if Corey or Mr. Rolls go down at all, at any point, it's a very, very scary situation for MYM because Gragas and Maokai are not the best at cleaning up. They're not the janitors in this scenario. So keep a close eye on those two carries yeah, Rocket, and the vision. Rocket are definitely waiting for a chance to, to really break out here and they can snowball off of kills. A lot of their champions can. Overpow can. Yankos can. Nukta can. Woolite can. The problem is they haven't got them. Between those four champions, it's only been one. Between the whole team. And again, you've got these sort of very strong champions, Irelia, Nidalee, and LeBlanc. And with the lane swap strategy that Rocket employed, they focused the towers. Then they went to those standard lanes with towers sort of down and low. And it stalled out the lane phase. So even though Rocket attempted to accelerate it, even though Rocket tried to get those towers down and create opportunities to move around the map, it actually didn't work in their favor. It didn't allow them because of the fact that bottom outer turret is still standing. Remember, Rocket were there, what, six minutes on the clock? Seven minutes on the clock? And they didn't get it. Correct. And because of that sort of small misstep, all of that investment has somewhat played into MYM's favor. MYM lost the, gave up the first dragon. They didn't pick a fight around it because they knew they couldn't. And intelligently picked the fight around the third spawning dragon which Meet Your Makers won and got the, uh, the objective as well. And, and importantly for Meet Your Makers, they've, they've been playing the game in the safest way possible, which is just don't face check anything, don't die, and you'll be okay. In theory, that's, that's how pretty much most games should work. But against this squad that can just really get rolling if they're able to get a couple of key picks, MYM have not allowed them that. They've only played where they can be safely. 30 seconds now on this dragon. They look to set up some vision control, meet your makers, 
as Rocket have backed off of the pit. And this is the first time that MYM have had better vision and better control. Rocket, for the two previous times, had invested a lot more wards, a lot more vision, and had relied on the early damage advantage of their composition. But now they're respecting the engage power of a double Righteous Glory, Maokai plus Leona. You know, all of that lockdown is terrifying. And again, look at Corey. Every time MYM group up as a death ball, it's the four-man team with the exception of Corey. He wants to be on the sidelines. Because if Rocket have to deal with two threats, it gives the opportunity for Corey to find somebody and pop him. Like he's trying. Oh. He's definitely trying. He's revealed though. And it also buys all of that space. You know, it's, it's these zones of threat. Just the fact that Corey was sitting in the bush, it was so scary to Rocket. They arrived late and they didn't get that third track. But meet your makers with the ones that do. Yanko slowed up by the solar flare. He hops the wall to safety. So meet your makers. Don't get anything there, but they do chase Rocket away. Yeah, and look at that flash from Warlight blown. So by the time the Solar Flare and Righteous Glories are back up, they have the opportunity to jump on him once more. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a great trade because Solar Flare has such a low cooldown as an ultimate. To get summoners for it, you buy yourself so many openings and so much time to be able to do it again and hopefully pick up kills or force even more out of the enemy team. So let's see, how do MYM plan on winning this game? If they decide to push waves, Corky with Trinity falls short range, but there's not a massive amount of threat from Rocket, with the exception of side lane. So for Rock, uh, MYM, they actually have the option to siege towers, these inner towers anyway, on the condition they've got good side lane vision. Because with the disengage from Gragas, with the CC from Yona, and the fact that Rocket have to run directly at you. There's no real hard CC, with the exception of LeBlanc, which again, has to be directly at you. That means MYM can play that game. So we'll see if they decide to put up those wards and then set their sights in inner turrets. For the time being, it just seemed quite fine and dandy to farm it out and stall out to this late game. Yes, indeed. Vision cleared out, meet your makers, just try and chip away at the Rocket Ward line. Cory now moving in to the Rocket Jungle with Moro. Take down a blue buff. Got some waves building on the bottom side, let's see if they're able to use them effectively. Yeah, and actually the more you look at it, not only do MYM have the option to siege with good side lane vision, or good uh, flanking vision, there's so little wave clear from Rocket. It's risky wave clear from Nuke Attack. Yes, will I in, you know, the switcheroo um, Rocket, it's a fish bones form can get some AoE down, but again, it is risky. You run the threat of being hit by a Dragus Barrel. So let's see how Rocket defend this one. MYM pushing both middle and bottom lane. And they've not fully committed to a single tower yet. We'll catch a glimpse middle. But again, no wave clear, so relatively smart, relying almost entirely on Woolite. But he does manage to defend against the two members of MYM in the middle lane. Yeah, Nuke Dog was enough to scare them away too. I feel like it's a bit gritty to... Watch that charm. A bit gritty to try and split. Uh, take two towers at once. As five, they may have been able to grab one of them, but as it stands, both were defended by Rocket here. Meet your makers. They get the Solar Flare, but Yankos is over the wall. On the flip side, the fact that they have pressured two lanes, they're denying some CS. They're denying the jungle camps. That was a stolen blue buff. MYM, I agree with you, probably could have got a tower, I think, if they committed to one lane fully, but they've denied jungle resources, and they're keeping Rocket on the back foot. What worked in Rocket's favor, they defended the towers and they've sort of reset the siege. All of those wards that MYM had placed, not in the jungle. No more vision and MYM are just gonna back off, spend some of the gold, and then look to redo this play. 2,000, in fact, on Mr. Ryle's Corky. So he can finish off that uh, bloodthirster. And then some. And then some, yeah. Yeah, you bring up a really good point there. So they, they were able to push in quite a lot of pressure. Rocket, you can see, they're really only controlling about 40 to 30% of the map at a given time. So Meteor Makers have a lot of wiggle room here to just try and force Rocket to dance to their tune yet again. Yeah. And JY actually finished off the Frozen Heart. Or Ambience. Makes a lot of sense again against the, actually makes a huge lot of sense. Auto attack from Irelia, from Jinx, as well as the buff that Nidhi's going to put on anybody. Just that uh, attack speed decrease is going to work wonders. I see Vanda going Aegis as well. It's not necessarily a lot of, you know, bursty damage from William. Um, as far as like AP mage goes, you know, Corey's 
a little bit more single target than AoE, but I like it because of all of the lesser AoE. Maokai's got AoE, Kragas has got AoE, even Leona. They're smaller amounts, but it will work in their favor once Rocket group up for these fights. And yeah, the, other, so the other thing MYM can also do is they can bait Baron Vision. We're, we're late enough in the game that, and again with all the catch power, if MYM get good red side jungle wards uh, from Rocket down, then MYM can play the bait game. Instead, they're just going to look again for more picks. Yeah, they got another flash out of Overpow. Let's see what they can do here. Another one from Yankos as well. They're still clearing the wards out. They were spotted on the way up to that, which is why they were able to react and have it still. Getting a pair of summoners for one ultimate. It's a hell of a trade. Oh, of course it is. But the only thing is, how do MYM convert this to objectives? They do have, obviously, uh, control the jungle again. Top half was MYM's favor. They're moving to the bottom half as Dragon's about to spawn. But they're not pressing the towers yet. MYM might be playing for a Dragon or a Baron victory, which is, of course, a much safer option. And you know what? When your LCS auto-relegation spot is on the line... Don't want to take too many chances. No, you don't. So that's probably the safer, smarter option. Play it slow, play it steady, and just let your um, uber-mega ultra tanks tank your way to victory. Tank their way through the super-mega death rockets, as it were. And then some. 15 seconds on this Drake. Meet your makers, have mobilized to try and clear the vision out once again. It's just 10 seconds away now. Corey still clearing out through the brushes. Let's see how this one unfolds. There's a lot of Rocket members here. But they are forced back into their jungle. And, and again, you just have to highlight, look at Corey's positioning. If the bottom wave is pushing, Corey could shove it out and push it back towards Rocket. If Meet Your Makers decide to start dragging, Corey is flanking. I know it's a relatively simple thing, but it just shows that the communication and the decision-making from each of makers is on the same page. It's there like it, it didn't appear to be for the longest time in this split. And we, we can harp on about Noxiac and how, how much his arrival changed, but generally speaking, the whole team has just stepped up several levels here, and it's been showing. They're going to start up this dragon right now. This would be number four for them. Rocket, they have to react. This dragon's going down pretty quickly, though. They have no engage. How do Rocket plan to engage? Nuketech's going to dash forward and instantly run away. With Rocket's team composition, they needed to have gotten ahead early, and they needed to be finding the kill. They need to be proactive with their team composition. And as long as MYM is playing the group of four and the sort of flanking Ari, there's very little that Rocket can do unless they punish a Meteor Maker's mistake. So Corey, he has been somewhat caught out. This is yeah. an exciting duel. Overpower's here. There's a teleport coming in. Corey and Nuke Duck both, or excuse me, Nuke Duck and Overpow both chasing down Corey, but now it's Overpow who's caught out and he doesn't have any way to get back. JWoww smacks him in the head for another kill. Well, what can else can Meteor Makers do? They've taken their fourth dragon of the game. So could a kill onto Overpower and Nuke Duck blew his flash to try set that one up. Mr. Riles, Horo, Noxiac on the tower. Looks like they're going to pick this one up. We're like a little bit late to the party. Dangerous. Couple of hits away. But luckily, that Static Shiv and Rockets defend the towers on 240 hit points. So a few more auto attacks. Yep, right now. Rollins is in a pretty strong position, though, because he's got not just the Trinity Force right now, but he's got the Infinity Edge completed. See the Giants members still watching this game. Now in comes Noxiac. Will I, for a moment, it looked like he was caught, but they were able to force him back yet again. And remember, every single time Meet Your Makers get an advantage, every single time Meet Your Makers press on their lead, the Giants' heart skips a beat. Setting us up for a tiebreaker for 10th position, Pirate. We'll follow immediately after. I'm way off an item, so it was a Frozen Heart from JWoww's Infinity Edge instead of Bloodthirster from Mr. Riles. Hey, they you can still build it whenever they want, but you I know what, this is the thing. They, they have there. had so much gold, they've had the luxury of being able to pick and choose exactly where they want to go with this one. Now, they want to go bottom lane. Nuketuck and Vander, it's the tower that's in their sights, however, and it's starting to evaporate. Janna Shield on is going to keep it alive for the time being. They're really good chunks, again, from Meet Your Makers. Do you see that wave clear from Will I? Doing wonders. Two auto attacks kills the melee minions, but the fact that Meet Your Makers is feeling a little more confident, they do secure the tower. Dodge and skill shots, too. I mean. But again, you see them grouped up. They had yes. the full support of the team, and they take that tower on two waves worth of minions. As long as MYM continue to do that, decisive and get those uh, Trinity Force empowered auto attacks from Mr. Riles down. Right. It's not complicated. All they have to do is stick together, play it smart, don't give Rocket an opening. They still only got one kill. Rocket have not been able to pick up anything, 
in these little team skirmishes or even in the fights. They've been afraid to take them as a result. And Meteor Makers, you know, they've got themselves 4,000 gold in the lead. And Rocket, they have to make moves quickly, but they're running yeah. out of time. The thing that I do have to highlight, though, when you go back to that dive onto Corey by Overpower and Nukta, yes, it didn't work out, but it's actually what Rocket needs to do more of. They have to find somebody alone. It's the only time since First Blood, in fact, that Rocket actually did that. You can see vision control in that tri bush. Rocket looking for a target. They want to find somebody alone or split pushing. The Meteor Makers have simply not presented opportunities. Yeah, you're right. It, it, it really was a bit unlucky that the one didn't quite work out the way it did for them. But uh, taking chances is the way Rocket is going to need to get back into this game. Meteor Makers just aren't giving them very many, however. No, definitely not. And we're going to go back to Dragon number five, or the Baron. With the wards that Meteor Makers are setting up, they're going to be happy. They're going to have the option to make the play. Force Rocket to engage. Force Rocket to check a Baron or check a Dragon. With inner turrets going so, so low, was it 240 HP in the middle lane? Top tower, I think it's actually untouched, but we see how quickly they do drop when Meteor Makers get up to them. Rocket are going to be forced to engage. And the fact that their team comp relies on flanking, relies on skirmishes, not 5v5s, is obviously going to just play right into Meteor Maker's hands. You do see the jump onto Corey, but now there's the fight. Yep, overpower right in the middle of all the team. There's the monsoon out. Yankos was stopped for just a moment, but he's going to leap and hop his way away. Nuke Duck now moving back in, but then he moves back and moves back again. A couple of jukes there. Meanwhile, a turret goes down in the bottom side. Meteor Maker's. They have the minions to make it happen. Yeah, minions working in MYM's favor despite the engage from Rockat. Ninja Makers come away relatively unscathed. Horo didn't even pop his ultimate. And look at this vision in favor of MYM. They can peel and catch anyone from Rockat at a moment's notice. Wise to back away. They're playing the bait game. They don't really want to focus the objective without having someone from Rockat down. And you know, just to go back to items again. Needlessly large rod, almost hourglass for Corey. If you look at Yankos, yes, he does have a fully stacked Rod of Ages uh, in a minute's time or shortly. But other than that and the Magus upgrade, just a blasting one. Very expensive, very scaling build. But it might be too late. Nidalee's power and strength in the early game didn't shine through. The lane swap and the tower pushes never gave Yankos the opportunity. Unfortunately, we need to see what he does. He did just finish that uh, Void Staff. Literally, as we were talking about it, but uh, again, I don't know if it's enough. I, I feel like it's too late. Yeah, it, it's definitely not where they would like it to be right now. And you can see that when they have tried to take uh, fights or catches, they just haven't had quite enough damage, and MYM has been able to clean up in a number of situations. Let's see what Nuke Duck can do here. He's going to find Horo, but he himself gets caught for a second. He had a little bit of backup in the form of Vander. The rest of Rocket are here now. It's 19 seconds on this next Dragon. Neither team wants to have and why anything bad happening to them? MYM are split here. This is a chance for Rocket to control this side of the pit. Yeah, so that was the first time MYM were not grouped as the 4 1. That big front line of JWoww was away. But with the crab movement speed shrine and the fact that MYM have managed to regroup, it becomes all sorts of difficult for Rocket. Dragon number five is sitting, waiting. They've got one line. Yes, they have. He's going to throw them the chompers, but it's not going to matter. Oro in the front, taking up all the damage. Yankos and Overpower now going really low as Oro picks up Yankos around the back of it. A double kill over to the Gragas. And that should be another dragon for Meteor Makers. This will be number five. Rocket are scrambling here five, to find an answer. Yeah, five versus three. We need to see whether or not Rocket can pull off something magical. The odds are stacked against them. And they're split up. Warlight, no QSS, no flash. And this is going to be Aspect of the Dragon to meet your makers. 37's on the clock, and they cut Warlight on top of it. Nuke Duck also extremely low as he dashes out. Corey looks to chase him away, but they found four kills and their fifth Dragon on that one. Quick shot. Now they're going for Baron. With death time is so high, this is, a, this is relatively safe. The only thing they've got to be careful of is the teleport from Overpower. Mr. Riles is low, and Noxiac is running into Furious. There's no wards in the pit, so this will be secured. And Meet Your Make is just very, very smart, patient play. Really understanding the team composition and also punishing Rockat's uh, defensive play. Rockat had a team comp that needed to do stuff early. It didn't, and Meet Your Makers have outscaled them by this point. Yeah. Effectively gotten themselves just about everything they can. Aspect of the Dragon, the Baron buff is on. Rala is able to unleash a hail of bullets onto that minion wave to clear it out top. 
And Rockhead are running out of options in this game. I think it's fair to say they are out of options. Again, for Mecha Makers, they've just got to siege now. They waited, they sieged a little bit, five, eight minutes ago. And with the only outer, uh, inner turret still remaining in the top lane, plus the fact they've got some vision, you can see very clearly Mecha Maker setting up. Teleport is with JWoww, so he's shoving in the bottom lane. Yeah, if, if Rocket can somehow outlast this, which seems very, very unlikely at this point, maybe they can do something once Baron buff and Aspect wears off, but that's such a long shot right now. And Meteor Makers, they're not letting them leave their base. Yeah, you've also got to highlight the fact, Warlight was caught by Solar Flare, he QSS and flashed away. But even that didn't really matter because JWoww could chase him. There was still a Zenith Blade. Horo, he didn't have the greatest explosive cast, it actually knocked Warlight to safety. But the fact is there is so many sources of lockdown, and the Mega Tanks are not going to get burst through by Nidalee, LeBlanc, or Aurelia. So as long as Woolite is the focus for MYM, it's a relatively easy pickup. No defense from Rocket. And that tower goes down just way too quick. Double Cannon Mini Wave and powered by the Baron buff. Woolite takes a zap shot, but here comes the teleport for Wow. They're looking to make a push onto the inhibitors. That inhibitor turret already down to half its health as the rest of MYM meet little resistance from Rocket. Inhibitor sure to fall here. There just are no answers for Rocket. Well, we'll have to find out what MYM, how well they can close this one out. With the win, it should set them up for a tiebreaker with Giants. It's a battle for that very, very last auto relegation spot. Super Minions now pouring through the top lane. And look at this, Rocket, not even able to defend their base. So difficult. We said who wants it more here, Quick Shot. It seems right now, Meet Your Makers, they want a chance to fight for their LCS lives. Let's see if they can get it here. It's getting down to the wire. Inhibitor number two taken down. Giants still looking on, and they're rotating down to the bottom. A clean sweep is what MYM are looking for. Well, it's going to be the case. Aspect slowly wearing off. Baron about 30, 40 seconds left. Aspect is now gone. Does not matter. Look at this rocket. They just they don't have a way to engage. That is the problem. They needed to flank. Simply put, Mutual Makers is knocking on the door with a sledgehammer. Yep. Two of the gates are down. Third one's looking close to follow. MYM taking their time. There we go. Now they move in with the mini wave. And it's down. Overpow. Last desperate charge as Yankos moves around. But Overpow's going to go down. Corey picks him up. Yankos half his health. Trying to dodge away from Corey as the Fox fires on him. Orbit Deception dodged out. Woolite kiting back. But Horo just absorbing it like it doesn't matter. Yankos is going to fall. Horo with the rampage as JWoww's in the front. Twisted advance right back into the in in turret lasers. Nuke Duck, he's going to meld after the fact. Super Mega Death Rocket comes in. But it won't do enough. Blinking health bars are not going to stop me, your makers. They have got this tiebreaker set in their sights, and 41 minutes into the game, knocking on the Nexus. Can Woolite try to push them back? It doesn't look like it. Noxiac's buying some time, and they are going to take it down. Meet your makers, forcing the ninth place tiebreaker with Giants Gaming. Slow and steady wins the race. We saw the coach camp towards the end, Yamata Cannon nodding in approval. That victory, meet your makers and giants in the 23rd hour, managed to put wins on the board. Really, actually upsetting the apple cart. They were not the favorites in the matchups. You could argue MYM today against Rocket, maybe. But yes, we have at least that guaranteed tiebreaker for ninth. The one thing we also have to highlight, Pyra, with that victory, Rocket are now in the promotion tournament. They finish eighth. There is no way for them to make it to the safe spot. Elements are secured. Rocket from fourth place in the summer split, potentially making it to Worlds. Now in a position they have to re-qualify for the European LCS. Daunting prospect for them. But for Meet Your Makers, a sigh of relief as they still have a chance here. So we'll have that match for them to try and stay alive and have that second to last spot in the promotion tournament. Yes. Or if they lose to Giants at the end of it all, they will be down to 10th place guaranteed anyways, but they have a chance now. Yes, automatically relegated. So that is the first matchup that we'll have as a tiebreaker. Depending on the result of Unicorns versus H2K, we may also have a battle for the seeding of fourth place. So that will be coming up in a moment or two. But for, for MYM, I actually think more importantly for Giants, we saw, you know, Both pictures teams really there. stepped up. Agreed. 
I just think MYM have been better than Giants in the last two weeks. If you disregard everything else, you look at the last four games and only the last four games. Yeah. I don't know who's going to come on here. MYM have been on, I would say, a more positive trend lately. It's not just since Noxiac, but around that time. Yep. And Giants, they really only, I feel like only their performance today has really been that shining light. And it was, it was fantastic, don't get me wrong, but it just seems like the track record, if we got to go with, I mean, there are no safe bets anymore, yeah. but if we got to go with something that's slightly more safe, MYM, they look like a slightly better team in that situation. It should actually be quite an exciting game, because I think what it's Giants be did to win against the Copenhagen Wolves today was just full aggression. They just went full all in, they had a super aggressive team. Relatively similar, except it was controlled, right? Exactly. They had aggressive, they had engaged top, engaged support, they waited until they had the right items, and they punished Rocket's indecisiveness. Yeah, and the fact that they were able to make those adjustments on the fly, again, it does speak so well to how much they've been able to improve their communication yeah. over the time and just massively, massively outplay opponents that were just not up to handling it. Agreed. And I think if you look at the victory celebrations for MYM, they're actually one of the more animated teams in recent weeks when they tend to pick up wins, you know, jumping, hugging. But the weight of the situation is, despite a victory, they still have to win another game. And I think you can feel that. I think you can see that in the guys. They, they have to play for their jobs, quite literally. Yeah, they do have to play for their jobs. Now, with the second chance locked down for Meter Makers, let's pull up those standing and see what they need to do next. We talked about that tiebreaker. We're about to see it. So that will happen right after game number five. Of course, Elements have secured seventh place. Now Rocket, as you mentioned, they're in the promotion tournament for sure. Yeah, no doubt about it. We'll have to play a best of five against either the second or third uh, challenger team and we'll have to see how that works out. Yep, now for a look into MYM's do or die win, we're gonna shoot it back to our trio of analysts at the desk. Thank you, Pyrotechnics. We have our very first tiebreaker, and MYM, I gotta say, fantastic pulling it together, maybe even leading up in the last couple of weeks and now coming to fruition here, yeah. uh, albeit just at the end. Well, uh, full respect for four medium makers. If you go a few weeks back, they looked like they were done. That's it, they were losing nearly every single game. They had so many problems coming into this, but remember Corey, he left the day before the LCS started and they had to play with Blizzard for two weeks, then he came back, and there were so many problems, and yet they managed to bounce back here. Noxia coming in, Yamato Cannon, of course, running the show as a coach. Full credit to them, they deserve this one. Now, they just gotta make it count against Giants. That's yeah. the big one. And uh, build on what they have done in this game, let's quickly touch on the things that went right for them, and I wanna pull up the replay of uh, the very first big fight they when they get three kills in this fight, and it gets them going for the whole game. Right, so the setup here is kinda weird for Rocket, because they know that Corey is standing on the bottom side of the map. There's a pink ward he's standing in, in this tri-bush. And not a single guy on Rocket says, okay, let's place a ward at least down towards the south side of the river so we can see when he's coming in. So if you just roll the clip, we're going to see how they suddenly get forced down towards the bottom side of the map by uh, Meteor Makers. Then they're coming with the four guys on the top side. And almost like they forget Ari sitting there and get caught out. Jengus just dies instantly. They all collapse onto Corey here, but he managed to escape. And now the big tank's coming in for Meteor Makers. So, this was simply just a very poor setup where you allow Meteor Makers to get a flank on you and you have zero response for it. Yeah. And as the game went on, they did get a little bit reluctant. MYM, a little bit afraid maybe to not make the wrong decision, but who can fault them for that? Yeah, they, they were reluctant to make the, the wrong decision, but at the same time, everything from MYM, pretty much from picks and bans, was fairly safe when you look at it. They weren't pushing the boat out, not trying any new picks. They picked two tanks, uh, an AD carry we know Rales can play, and everything was just kind of straightforward for MYM. So uh, they've kind of looked at where they uh, have to play and, and what champions they need, and they've just put their players on those champions yeah. for this game, and it's worked out very well. And I gotta say, I still find it weird how Rocket sets up their competitions. Because Overpower has not been a carry top laner. He's been, you know, he's transition, transitioned from mid lane, so it's tough for him to get into the groove of the, of the top lane. Clearly, stop putting him on carries like Aurelia, like Jarvan. Put him on a tank, a supportive top laner instead. JWoww here, who's still fairly new to the LCS, put him on Maokai for Meteor Makers. Works so much better. And at the same time, you keep giving these immobile carries to Woolite, who's a guy who had trouble positioning correctly. So it feels like in pick and bans and the way they set up their comp, it makes it a lot harder for Rocket to do well. And that's also why they lose to a team like Meteor Makers now. Yeah, it makes me think of when we talked to Dentist from the Copenhagen Wolves at the beginning of the split when he said, you got to look at your players and not just see what role they are playing, but what they can do in that role. If you're a top laner but not a carry, that's absolutely fine. You're going to make yourself useful yeah. in different aspects of the game. I feel like that's maybe the guidance that Rocket needs. It seems like it for sure, but now it's too late. 
because they're down in promotion tournament, and it's not even like you look at Rocket's game and you, games and you say, oh, they're just uh, unlucky. They were unlucky in a few games and lost it. No, it's been fairly one-sided games whenever they do lose. They have looked good in certain compositions. I mean, whenever they protect Woolite enough, they have pulled out, pulled out a few wins, and whenever uh, Nuke Dog had a good start to the game as well. So there's still hope. I think in the promotion tournament, they're going to be fine. I mean, you know more about the challenger teams. Do you think there's anyone outside of maybe Origin who can challenge Rocket? I think one of the biggest underdog stories in Challenger has been the Lowland Lions and how they've pretty much stolen second place from every team that thought they had it. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, Lowland Lions, they're a little unorthodox. They have a carry top laner in Morsu. That could very easily tear apart, uh, you know, Rocket, and especially if Overpower is not feeling too comfortable in that role. That that could potentially be a matchup that we might see. Yeah, they're rewatching this game, and it's back to the drawing board for Rocket after a disappointing split. Not much more to say about that. And Elements, they are now in seventh, means we will definitely see them next split. But again, for them also to the drawing board, yeah, because it just hasn't been a success story for neither of these teams. Coming up, though, the Unicorns of Love could have a chance to contest the number four playoff seed. But first, they'll need to take a win off H2K Gaming. Stay tuned and see what happens when we return. Particular game for Mucha Makers is super important. If they do not win, they will be in that automatic relegation. And he set his sights on Yankos. Yes, he has, and he might have gotten him. Yep, he does. Now, can he make his escape? Oh, that is a good solar flare down. Nili, 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 nili. Yeah, back out, back out, back out a little bit. Nice, Drake, 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 Drake. 41 minutes into the game, knocking on the Nexus. Can Woolay try to push them back? It doesn't look like it. Meet your makers, forcing the ninth place tiebreaker with Giants Gaming. <laughs> 